Allah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad wa barakatuh. All praises due to Allah. We praise Him and we thank Him that we are able to carry on with the class. Inshallah, today being the second session after we resumed last week. All right. Um, so we welcome everyone back to the class. Inshallah, we we'll have gotten a few weeks rest. Some would have gotten an extra week rest last week. Alhamdulillah. And uh, so today we continue. Um, with our book two, all right, Madina book two. So today, inshallah, we want to finish off and um, what we have been doing last week by way of the exercises in chapter number nine. So last week, what we did, for those of you who were not here, we read over the passage of um, lesson nine in book two, all right, and then we did some of the exercises by way of practice to re refresh our minds as to some of the rules that we will introduce to in this particular chapter. All right. So we're going to um, we're going to continue with that today, inshallah, and then we will begin. Uh, we will begin chapter number ten. Before we begin, anybody has any questions? So like I said, some of these things we would have done before we did the crash course of book one. Um, we did a revision of it last week. And today, inshallah, we're just gonna complete the last few exercises in this chapter. Uh, before we begin chapter 10, we will just, you know, mention as a, by way of summarizing some of the rules of, you know, grammar that we were introduced to in this chapter, chapter number nine. Delta test here, right? So we're gonna just All right. So we're going back to page. We on page. What page is this? Page sixty-five. Then page sixty-five. All right. Rakam Saba, number seven. And we would have looked at this last week, right? And of course, there was a question last week by in terms of the the, um, the keys of the words that come come after the harfunida. Harfunida is what is the particle of calling or addressing someone, right? Now there are many. There are various huruf by which we can call someone, whether it's someone close or someone far or whatever, right? However, the most popular that we know about, because of the Quran and listen to a hadith and so on, we know we have the particle ya. Okay? Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Ya ayyuhal nabiyu. Right? And so on. So we see here how it is used. Right, how it is used in this particular exercise. So let's look at it quickly again there. So again, we're on page 65. Kamsa was 65 again. Yeah, Kamsa was page 65. Rakam Sabah, number seven. All right. So we know we have a word, for example, Muhammadun. Muhammadun, right? This is a singular word. There's a reason why I'm mentioning that. It's a single word, right? It's alam, it is what you call a, um, a proper noun. In English, we say call it a proper noun, the name of a person or a place. You know, we refer to it in English as a proper noun, right? In Arabic, we say it's alam. Alam means something known, right? Or a name. So when we add on before it, ya, when you're calling somebody, what we say? We say, ya Muhammadu. So without the ya, we have Muhammadun. And with the ya, we have Muhammadu, single number, 
right? For those of you who were not here last week, this is what we had covered in addition to a few other things, right? Another example, Hamidun, right? Ya Hamidu. What is the difference from Tanwin Dhamma to single Dhamma, all right? Oops, what did I just do? Next one. Ustadun, ya ustadu, ya ustadu. Again, tanwin number goes to single number. Why? Because of the ya. Let's look at the second set of examples below. We have Uhtu Hamidin. Uhtu Hamidin. This is what we call Mudaf, Mudaf Eli. Okay? Mudaf, Mudaf Eli. <coughs> the Mudaf is Ukht, Ukhtu, and Mudafilai is Hamidin. All right? So we know we have already met Mudaf, Mudafilai, and Mudafilai, which is the second word, Mudafilai, it is always in the genitive case. It is Majroor. And we know generally the sign of something being Majroor is the Kasra, whether single Kasra or Tanin Kasra. That's the Mudafilai. What about the Mudaf? which is the first word in this pair of words. The first word in this case is Ocht, okay? Ocht, all right? Now the Mudaf can change. Mudaf could be nominative, it could be accusative, it could be genitive, all right? Oh, but the Mudaf Eli, as we just said, is always genitive. Okay. Now look at what happens to it when we add the ya. Yeah. So we have coming after it now. We have ya ukta hamiden. So look at it. From ukhtu hamiden, you get ukta hamiden. All right. Why? Because of the ya coming before it. What is the ya again? We call it the harf and nida. Harf and nida or the um. Uh, Particle of, of calling, right? It calls on it. Right? All right, so another example you have Abdullahi, Abdu. Allahi. So the word Abdu, it is Mudaf. And the word Allahi, it is Mudaf Ilai. Mudaf Ilai. So as we said, Mudaf Ilai is always genitive. Okay? It is in the case of Jar. And the Mudaf now, it is, it could be in any case. It could be accusative, nominative, or genitive. In this case, Abdu, it indicates that it is in a nominative case. There's nothing before it to act on it, so therefore the default case, as we know, is normally the nominative case. So it, it, it will carry the dhamma. All right. So Abdu Allahi, Abdullahi. When we add the ya before it, we get ya abda Allahi. Ya Abdullahi. All right. So please don't be confused. It's one word, uh, sorry, it's one name, one name, Abdullah, but it's made up of two words. This is what they call. Um, Mudaf Mudaf Eli, or sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you have a name of somebody with two words, which is not Mudaf Mudaf Eli, but that's a different case. We'll see about it the next time. Right? And this is one name made up of two words, right? So it's called Mudaf Mudaf Eli. You have, of course, Mudaf Mudaf Eli. Which is not a name, but is rather shows possession of something, right? Like Baytullah, the house of Allah, right? Kitabullah, the book of Allah. It's not a name, but is also Mudaf 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 It shows possession. All right. So as we said, the Mudaf can be any case. These two components of this Mudaf Mudaf 
first component, the mode of, can be any case. Please be clear with that. It can be nominative, it can be accusative, or it can be genitive. However, the mode of Eli, it is always genitive. So here we see again, when we add the ya, we get what? Ya Abdullahi. Ya Abdullahi. So we see the fatha. The, the dhamma change into a fatha. Why? Because of the ya. Now, I think I asked a question last week whether that means that it is in the accusative case, because clearly it shows, it's showing the sign of nasp, of being mansub. Right? So after the year, the word are coming after the year, in this, in Khalfunida, it is in, in the accusative case, right? It is in the accusative case. However, singular words like Muhammad and so on, notice it, it just loses its tanween and it gets a single tanween. Sorry, a single dhamma. Right, so you lose the standard number and you get the single dhamma. So we're going back up to the line above. You have Muhammadun, right? And the Adi Ya, you get Ya Muhammadu. Ya Muhammadu. So the general rule, please pay attention to this, right? The general rule, the general rule is that the word that comes after Ya, it is in the nominative case. Right? However, you have words like Muhammad, Hamid, Ustav, and so on, right? Which, while they would be in a position of a denominative case, they are, they are what they call Mabni. In that case, they will be Mabni ala Dhamma. So they will be uh, indeclinable. In these cases, it will be indeclinable and it would not change, the, the Dhamma will not change. Now, the word Muhammad is not indeclinable all the time, right? You're just saying here, when the letter or the harf, ya comes before it, it makes it indeclinable and it is mabni, it is fixed on what? On the single Dhamma. But it is in a position of nas, okay? The position of us. So when it comes to the other words like the mudaf, right, Abdullah, and so on, those are not indeclinable, and therefore they will, in fact, reflect the fact that they are in the case of us, right? It's always an accusative case here. But the sign of it will differ. Some of it will be declinable, and therefore they will take the sign of it being in the case of uh, NOS. All right? And some of them will not be declinable, they will be map they will be fixed. All right? But for your purposes now, we're breaking it up into two types of words that come after the ya. Two types of words. So you have ya, you call in somebody, you have ya, right? Then after it, you have two types of words. You have a single word, right? Whether it is a proper noun of, or the name of somebody, or it is a, a title, like for example, Ustaz, or Sheikh, or, you know, Doctor, yeah, all right. Is the title or the description of somebody? So it's a single word. And then the second type of word is that which is mudof, mudof ilai. Right? So for your purposes now, you just remember, remember those two types of words could come after the yeah. Using yeah to call somebody is either, as I said, is either a proper noun, you call the person name, or you call them by the description or the title, Ustaz, Sheikh as imam, as the case may be. In those single words, they will carry a single dhamma. Okay? However, if it's mudaf mudafilai, like Abdullah, right, or ukhtu hamid, right, uh, and so on, then the first word, which is the mudaf, 
it will be in the case of Nas and will carry the sign of Nas, right? Or Abu Bak, right? Yeah, Abu Bak, right? Is the sign of Nas from Abu to Abba, right? So is that clear with everybody? Particular word shows the sign of nas as aleph instead of kaf. Any any questions? Any more questions? All right, so we want to rock on Samania, rock on number eight. And this one we mentioned last week as well, where we have the sound feminine plural, sound feminine plural, right? Jam and Jam al Mu'annaf as Salim, or the sound feminine plural. So as we said last week, remember if you have a word that ends with Tarma Buta, generally speaking, you can make it plural by taking off the Tarma Buta, adding an Aleph, Mamdura, which is a normal straight Aleph, and then adding the Ta Maftucha, which is a normal open Ta, okay? So from Sayyaratun or Sayyaratan, you get Sayyaratan. Right, so for example, they have the A to Sayyara or Sayyarata. The A to Sayyarata. I saw a car. I saw a car. The A to I saw Sayyarata. A car. Single. All right. When we make it plural, we get the A to Sayyarata. Now you might say, for those of you who were not here last week, you might say, okay, why does it ta the end they have ta in kasra? Why does it have ta in kasra? Does that mean it is genitive? Remember we said you have three cases: accusative, you have um, nominative, accusative, and genitive. The normal case of the nominative is what dhamma. The normal case of accusative is what. Fatha and the normal case of genitive is what? Kasra. Kasra below the letter, right? It's normal. Over here, you have the sound, feminine plural. They take the kasra for both accusative and genitive, right? So they don't take fatha at all. I didn't say feminine words there, eh? I said sound, feminine plural. Those three things I said. Not just feminine, plural. Sound, feminine, plural. Okay, sound, feminine, plural. What am I saying about sound, feminine, plural? That they take kasra in the accusative case and in the genitive case. Okay, we know already normal words will take kasra in the genitive case. All right. So just like that, this would also take the kasra in the genitive case. But the difference here is that it is also taking the kasra in the accusative case. So sound feminine plurals would only have dhamma and kasra. It would not have any fatha. Okay, no fatha for which, which words again? Sound feminine plural. Okay, so you have that here, sound feminine plural. What is a sound plural again? Do you remember what is a sound plural? A sound plural is where the singular word is still intact. There's nothing inserted in between 
there's nothing dropped out, right, and so on. But the, the original singular word is intact, right? So that's why we have sound feminine plural. So let's look at some examples here. Sa'alti, sa'alti al-mudiratu at-talibata, at-talibata. So the female principal asked the female student. When we make it plural, we get what? Sa'alti, sorry, not sa'alti, it's sa'alat, sa'alat al-mudiratu at-talibata, right? So it's sa'alat, but we said sa'alati because it's joining to the lama after. So we read it not with a sukun, but rather with a kasra. So we say sa'alat, sa'alat al mudiratu at talibata. Right? And we change it to plural, we get sa'alat al mudiratu at talibati. See that? No. Normally, the word that is maf'ol bihi, or the object of the sentence, it is in the accusative case, right? So the maf'ol bihi is always accusative. And we said normally we sign up a word being accusative is the fatha. In this case, the word is accusative, but it takes the kasra. Why? The annahu jamma al muannaf asal. Because it is sound. Okay, next one. al Mujallata. I read the magazine. Karatu al Mujallati. Al Mujallati. I read the magazines. Right, so the assignment here is to read the sentences with the correct endings, with the correct endings, and this is important. It's very important, okay? Because when you're reading, if you're reading the Quran, all of the harakats and the vowels will be there. But sometimes you're reading a book of hadith, or a book of tafsir, or a book of fiqh, or explanation of hadith, and most of the vowels will be absent. So you have to know how to read these words without the vowels. For example, here we have the word spelled as fa, lam, and qaf. So you already know that is qala qaf. Qala qallahu. How do we know it's who? Because after the fa'il or the verb, it is the fa'il, the dua of the verb. So the word qala qaf means what? He created or he made. Who it is doing the creating and the making? Allah who? So the fa'il or the doer of the verb has to be nominative. And we will carry the sign of it being nominative, which is the nominative the what? And the last letter? Dhamma. All right? So you all can see after me. Khalaqallahu. Allahu Ashamsa. Why do we say Ashamsa? Why do we say Ashamsa? And not Ashamsu. Because accusative, why is it accusative? Why is the word ashamsa accusative? Because it is maf'ul bihi, it is the object of the sentence. Okay? It is the thing that Allah created, among other things that are being listed. Okay? So the maf'ul bihi, it is accusative. And in this case, this word ashams will take the regular sign of a word being accusative, which is what? The fatha. All right? Everybody with me? So as I said last week, we have a sentence, 
You have different positions in the sentence to be filled. The verb, the of the verb, the object of the sentence, and so on, right? And each position carries with it a particular case. Okay, so with nouns, the nouns have three cases, as you know, right? So each of them carry a case. Okay, so the file, or the, sorry, the file, the do of the verb, that is always what? Is always nominative. It's always matter of form or nominative. It must all be he. That part of the sentence, which is the object of the sentence, it is always mansoom. It is always accusative. All right? So this is the position in the sentence. So the word will carry that or will be in that particular case, depending on what role it serves in the sentence. All right? And then now, after you figure out the case of the word, then you have to know what is the sign of that particular case, right? As you say, normally the words will take either fata, dom, orchestra, but there are some words which take other than fata, dom, orchestra to reflect that particular case that it is in, right? When you find I probably repeating myself a lot, some of you probably saying why the same thing is over and over and over and over. It is repeating it so that it hopefully it will stick, inshallah ta'ala. Right? So we have Khalaq Allahu Ashamsa. Allah created the sun. Wal Qamara and the moon. Notice I said Qamara, Ra with a fatta. Okay? So you notice when you're doing Arabic, you're getting pretty precise. When you're doing the Nahu and the grammar, Arabic grammar, you have to be precise with the vowels as you see here. Because a little change in the vowel changes the case, and change in the case could and normally does change the meaning of the sentence. All right, so we have to try and be precise with these vowels. All right, so we're going again. So you can say after me, Bismillah. Khalaqallahu ash-shamsa wal-qamara wal-nujuma wal-bihara wal-arda. Right. So far, please, please notice. So far, all of the words end with a fatah on the last letter. Okay? You all seen that, right? Why? Because they are all mafol bihi. They are all objects of the particular verb. Khalaq Allahu. Right? Ashamsa wal qamara wal nujuma wal bihara wal arda. Last one here you have was samawati. Why is it samawati? Because it is sound feminine plural. So, right? So it's not as samawata, but as samawati. Right? So, does that mean the word samawat it is genitive because it carries a castra? No, it is accusative. But remember, sound, feminine plurals, they, can, they are accusative with a castra. They are genitive with a castra and accusative with a castra as well. Right? Next page. Right, so next line. Sa'al al Abu Again, say after me. Sa'al al Abu Al Abana Wal Banati. The father asked the sons and the daughters. Okay. Is the difference here? One is with fata and one is with kasra, but they are both accusative. They are both the object of the sentence. I go across the page here. Katab tu, see after me, katab tu. Adi 
Now, what I mentioned is long time ago, but just to refresh our minds, when we have the demonstrative pronouns, hada and hadihi and dadika and tilka and so on, the word that comes after takes it the, the case of what that would have been. Okay? So, for example, what do I mean by that? Kataba means to write. Katab too means I wrote. Okay? So we have there the fail, which is the verb, kataba. We have the fail, which is the attached pronoun, to, which means I. I wrote, right? Katab too. So we have the fail and the fail. And in this case, the fail or the word, the verb, is the attached pronoun. Right? When we did attached pronouns to past tense verbs, katab tu, katab ta, katab ti, katab tum, and so on. All these are attached pronouns, and they represent the the uh, fa'il, the doer of the verb. Right? So in this case, you have the fa'il, the verb, which is the kataba. You have the fa'il, which is the doer of the verb, which is the attached pronoun too. And then you have the maf'ul, the he, which is the hadihi. The hadihi is a pronoun, and you know all pronouns are mabni. They don't change. Okay? However, the word that comes after the demonstrative pronoun, right, will take the case of what that would have been. Right? So normally, the maf'ul, the he, the maf'ul, the he will be in what case? I just mentioned that about 10 times in the last page. The maf'ul, the he will be in what case? Accusative, right. So, accusative is, is the, because it is the object of the sentence. So in this particular sentence, the maf'ul the he, technically is actually the word hadihi. That's the maf'ul the he. Katabtu hadihi. I wrote this. Right? That's the sentence. I wrote this. Right? In this case, these. I wrote these. Right? We use the singular feminine here because it's plural of viva akil. Right? Plural of viva akil. So you see, hadihi, hadinat. These. So I wrote these. So the maf'ul bihi here, it is the actually the word hadihi. But the word that comes after it now takes the case of that hadihi as well. All right? So because the hadihi is maf'ul bihi in the accusative case, it is not reflected in that word. Why? Because that word, it is mabni. It doesn't change. It doesn't reflect any change with case and so on. All pronouns are like that. All right? But it is still maf'ul bihi. And what I just said is that the word coming after it has to be in case of the demonstrative pronoun. So since that is an accusative case, the word kalimat and kalimat will also be in the accusative case. Right? Also be in the accusative case. Now on top of that, now we have this word, it is sound feminine plural. So being in the accusative case, it will take what now in the last letter? Pata orchestra. 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 Okay? Next line. So we are not from Arba, number four. Say after me, Ra'ay tul atibba'a wa tabibati. I saw the male doctors and the female doctors. Okay, Ra'ay tul atibba'a. Again, Ra'ay tul atibba'a wa tabibati. Remember the word atibba is plural of tabib, the male, the male doctor, okay? Tabib, atibba. Then you have tabibatun, which is female doctor, you have tab, then plural will be tabibat, okay? Sound feminine plural. Sound feminine plural in the accusative case will take you what? Castro, okay? Good. Next one, rakam khamsa. 
غسل الولد سيعطيني غسل الولد السيارات The boy washed the car. Okay. In this case, there's no plural, no sound feminine plural. It's just a single feminine word. In which case, it will take the normal sign of being accusative, which is the pattern. Okay. Anybody have any problem with that? Let's look at the last example and then we'll move on, right? Unless you also want to do some more. Say after me, Rasal al Waladu as Sayyarati. Right, so I want you all to be precise with you pronunciation and reading. Okay, one is Rasal al Waladu as Sayyarati. Ah, sorry, Rasal al Waladu as Sayyarati. As Sayyarata. Okay. Asayarata. Then this one now is Gosal al Waladu Asayarati. Make sure and pronounce the Aleph there. Right? That changes single to plural. Right? All right. Any questions? All right, so next one, he said, observe what, observe the following examples. Observe the following examples, and then after that, put in the Hamza al istifham on the following sentences. Now, remember we said we can change a statement into a question by adding something in front. Did we say that? So what do we do? We add an alif with a hamza on top, right? We can add hal, ha, lam, or we can just add an alif with a hamza on top, ah. Right, so we say al qalamu al al maktabi the pen is on the desk. You can change that in that question by adding the uh, Aleph on the Hamza. Uh, the Hamza on the Aleph before that statement. Okay? So we say what? Ah. Alamu alal maktab. Is the uh, is the pen on the desk, right? Now, if we add that now. To a particular sentence that has already right a hamza in it right or an aleph let's see what happens all right so we have let's look at the example al biharu jamul bahri al alif lam right al biharu jamul al bahri so what are we saying here? This is a statement, all right? The statement is what? The word al-biharu, it is the plural of al-bahr. Okay? So al-biharu jam'ul bahri. Now if you're gonna ask, make that a question, all right? You have to add the hamza, as I just said, you add the hamza on the aleph to turn the statement into a question, all right? But look what happened here. After that Hamza, we also have what? We have an X Aleph, which is the Aleph from the Aleph lamb. Right? I'll see that. We have the Hamza on the Aleph. Then we have the Aleph, which is what we call, we said this a few times, it is called Hamza to Wasu. Right? Or the connecting Hamza. What does that mean? It means that if there's anything before it, it will be silent. If there's nothing before it, then we read it with a particular vowel, right? 
So it's almost like there's a spoon on that. Uh, sorry. There is a spoon on the land, right? And then coming before it, there's the Hamza. Hamza al was, and we call the Hamza al was the Hamza we insert for the question. Okay? So we get what? The Hamza, then we have the statement Al Bikharu Jamrul Bakhri. So what happens? That two Hamzas merge and they get a single alif with that small mud above it there. Let's look at it here. Right. So how do you read that? Al Biharu Jamul Bahri. So it's Hamza Hamza, then the lamb. But when you merge it, you get that Aleph with the small mud sign above it. Right? Now this mud you don't have like a this is not the mud. Like in Quran, you have two, four, six beats and so on, right? So this one, I don't think there's a definite number of beats, right? In Quran, in the rules of Tajweed, you have specific lengths that you can, you know, make the mud or, and so on, right? Outside of Quran, outside of Tajweed, there's no rule with the Arabic and so on. So you can make it long, you can make it short and so on. Once you make it not as short as a single Hamza, you can't say Al Bihari. Because then it will sound as if there's no question there. It will just sound like the statement they had before. Right? Al Biharu Jamul Bahri. That Bihar is plural of Bahri. So you have to make it a question. Al Biharu. So you know it's a question being asked. All right. Bahri, is that um, Mudafi Lahi? In which case, um, in the statement, Jamal Bahri? Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, so why is, is a Castro? It's definitely because of the word jam before it. I don't know if you call it mudaf, mudaf, like, right? Because they have other um, guruf, all right? But, um, but yeah, it's, it's because of the jam before it, all right? Jam al Bahri, right? So plural of Bahri. I believe it is mudaf, mudaf, like. Right. Um, I don't know. Is the cab were you there when it when you were speaking about the year? Um beginning of the session? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all right, okay. I wasn't sure if you were there when I was there. I know you had asked the question last week. Right. So let's look at the other examples here. Right. So what they're asking us to do here is just to put in now the A ah in front of these sentences, all right? The ah. So what do we have here? We have al -ana Kharajta. Al ana no. Al ana mean presently or no. Kharajta. You came out or you left. Alright? So you change that in that question now. You would say al ana kharajta. Question mark. Alright? And you know we have a couple of places in the Quran where this is used, right? Like for example, when Firaun he see, see the water coming on him and he's about to drown. He wants to testify his belief, right? And the question was asked, and now, now you want to believe after all the trouble he gave to Musa and the children of Israel and so on, right? So, Al Anna, 
okay so let me see friend alana kharajta change it up question you have alana kharajta good next one statement we have here is al yawma raja'a abuka min dimashka min dimashka right dimashka is uh, damascus right so he said today your father came back from or returned from damascus right so there's a statement you can change it in that question you add the Aleph with the Hamza on top, we get what? Al Yauma. Okay, so say after me. Al Yauma. Roja Abuka. Mindi Mashki. Mindi Mashko. Question Why do we say the Mashko and not the Mashki? There's a harf. Harf a jar before it preposition before the word. Why doesn't it take Kasra? Why it take Fata? Some feminine plural does not take Fata, but why does this one take Fata? Mamnur Minasar. Mamnur Minasar are words that don't take kasra. So they come like opposite to sound feminine plural, okay? Remember that, right? So mamno minasav includes within the categories, and we did that in book one, and we also did it in the crash course. Words that are mamno minasav, you have a few categories. One of them are proper nouns of a non-Arab origin. Proper nouns of a non-Arab origin. So, Dimashq is his, um, from a non-Arab origin. All right? Proper noun. So, Men uh, Dimashq so is from Damascus. All right, next one. Talatha. Al-Mudarrisu Maridun. Al Mudarrisu Maridun. The teacher is sick. The teacher is sick. Good. So we change, we add the Hamza before the statement to make it a question. We would say what? Al Mudarrisu Maridun? Question mark. Is the teacher sick? Let's do one more example. Al Mudiru Kola Hakada. Al Mudiru Kola Hakada. Hakada means like this, right? Like this or, or that, right? So you would say, so it means what? The principal said that or the principal said like this, right? So we want to change that question. We would say, Al Mudiru. Question. All right. Good. So I think that should be pretty straightforward, inshallah ta'ala. Any questions on, on anything we did so far? Questions? Rakam Ashara, number 10. Now, you all will notice that each of these uh, exercises, each of them dealing with a particular, you know, grammar rule or particular phrase, um, constructs, you know, as the case may be. So it's not just practice, but each of them, or, or rather, 
not introducing, but explaining a particular um, aspect of the lesson. So number 10 here is to amil al misal summa ajib anil anil asilat al atiya ala zararihi. So look at the example and answer the questions in similar pattern. Right? So you have here man qala qaka man qala qaka who created you masculine singular okay who created you the man means who and qala is created ka is you right so who created you the answer is qala qani allah so say after me, uh, we'll just break this down, inshallah, and then we will end here, right? So this particular rule, okay? So say after me, man khala qaka, that's it, khala qani allahu. Right, so we say that together, we will say, Khala Qani Yal, Khala Qani Yallahu. Right, so see the next page. And I will just break it on, inshallah. Right, so we have a similar question here. Man Dara Baka, Man Dara Baka, who hit you? Who hit you? Right? They said, Darabani Muhammad. Darabani Muhammad. Muhammad hit me. Right? So, what is this rule here? This rule. is the introduction of something called noon noon al wiqaya noon al wiqaya which is the translated wiqaya means the saving or the protecting noon the protecting noon all right so you will notice let me just go back up to the example We'll, we'll stop here today, inshallah, after we go through this, right? So you have the word khalaqa. Khalaqa means he created, all right? Khalaqa. So if you want to say he created you, khalaqa ka, he created you. If you want to say he created you, plural, we say khalaqa kum, okay? And so on. You can say he created him. Who he created him? You say he created them. Whom? Right. Or if you say he created me, remember the pronoun you add to say me is it is what? It is a ya. Right. So if you want to say my book, you say kitabi my book. Right. My pen, call me, my pen. Okay. My phone, ha tifi, my phone. Now, when it comes to verbs, and this is more so with verbs, when you add this ya to the verb, something happens. All right. Remember, kasra, kasra below the last letter in a word. Kasra below the last letter in a word is what? It is a sign of that word being a noun. Right? It is, now this is going way, way, way back. When you first started the class, those of you started from the beginning, you would have done, you know, signs of nouns. How do you tell a noun from a word? Right? 
So if you look at Cassie Mines back to way back then, one of the signs of telling a noun from a verb is what? Is the fact that you can take a kestra on the last letter. What does that mean? It means that the verb now is not supposed to take a kestra below the last letter. Or verbs do not take kestra below the last letter. So when you have the cases of the verbs, right? Now not all verbs change cases, but with those that do change cases, you have fata, you have dhamma, or rather you have dhamma, you have fata, and then you, for the third case, you have sukun, jazm, okay? However, with nouns, you have same dhamma, fata, but then for the third case, which is the jar, you take the kastra. Okay, so you're all clear with that, right? You have verbs, you have nouns. Nouns have three cases. Nominative, a piece of genitive, right? Nominative, gamma, piece of fata, genitive, castra. Verbs have three cases as well, right? Nominative, accusative, and uh, joseph, joseph. Or in Arabic, you say uh, rough, uh, uh, nasp, and just right. So with verbs, they take dhamma, fata, but they don't take any kasha. What they take is a sukun for the third case. Why am I saying all of that? I'm saying all of that because when you have this pronoun, the ya, right, the ya, that ya naturally comes with a kasha before it. So if you have the word column, column a pen, okay. If you add the yat here to say my pen, what do we say? Call a me. The name takes a kastra. The last letter takes a kastra. Why is it taking kastra? Because of the ya attached to it. Right? It's not taking a kastra because it is changing case. And once that ya comes onto it, it takes the kastra. That kastra goes with the ya. Right? Now, we just said the verbs cannot take. Kestra on the last letter. So what what do what do we do? Right? So what they have done is that, or not they, but rather this is how the Arabic language is, right? Is that you put a, a noon now, right? You put a noon in between the verb and the pronoun. And this is only for the case of this uh, first person singular pronoun, which is a ya. Alright? So instead of saying Allah, you say ni Allah. You put that noon. What is the name of that noon? That noon is the noon al wiqaya. Say that noon al wiqaya. Noon al wiqaya. Right, so the word wiqaya is from the word. Same root word that you get the word taqwa from. Taqwa, you know, taqwa is translated as God consciousness or, or piety, as the case may be, right? But taqwa comes from root word which means to place a barrier. So you're placing a barrier between something and something. So that is the root word, right? Waqa. I think what root is waqa. So that's it. That's to place a barrier or place a you know, a, a, a fence between something and something else. In the case of taqwa or taqwa Allah, it means to place a barrier between yourself and the punishment of Allah. In this case here, you have the noon is being placed as a barrier between the verb and the pronoun. Which pronoun? Only for this pronoun, the ya. Okay? So it's called noon al wiqaya Right? Or the saving moon, or the protecting moon. Okay, so you will see this um, from time to time. Kalatani Allah, Kalatani Allah. All right, so I want to stop there. It's already nine twenty-three. Inshallah, any questions? I have a quick question. This um, attaching a verb to a pronoun. 
can this take place on any form of the, the verb or is it just for the third person singular masculine? Yeah, any verb. Any verb we could attach it down. Any any conjugation of the verb. So, so can I say um holoctu holoctu ni? Yeah, so you can attach a pronoun. So for example, say you can say katab to who? And it's attached. So it's two pronouns you have there. One is the file or the dual verb, and the next one is the map or the There's a complete sentence there. So if, if the teacher asks, um, Hal katabta adamsa, did you write the lesson? You can say, Nam katab tu hu. So you have two pronouns there, right? So that's the conjugation there. Past tense, second, um, first person, um, past tense, right? And if you say, you could also make it second person, masculine, right? So you say, uh, 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 if, if a teacher asks, did, did he write the lesson or did Muhammad write the lesson? They say, nah, nah. Um, well, that would be, that would be third person. You just ask if it's other than third person. So if you say, uh, Yeah, so if you say, did, if you say <laughs> did she write the lesson, you say, Nam katabat who? She wrote it. All right? I don't know if I answer your question. You were asking that, right? If you can add, if you can have pronouns on other than two persons, um, masculine singular. The yeah, I understand. All right, okay. All right, so any other questions? All right, so next week, inshallah, we will. I was really hoping to finish off the exercises today. <laughs> inshallah, we'll try to finish it up next week. There are about four or five more to go through, right? Okay. Yeah, about four or five to go through next week, and then we'll start the new chapter, inshallah. All right, Jazakumullah Khair. Uh, please try to review what we did today. Um, one of the best, best ways to review is to always read the passage. You would have read the passage probably about 10 times over the course of you know different lessons, um, different sessions, reading over the passage and just looking out for some of the rules that we would have done. That helps tremendously because what it does is that it, you know, it helps us to appreciate the context of these things and how they're used, all right? So reading over the passage and if you can read it aloud, you read it. So inshallah, try to read it as much as possible between now and next week. And of course, if you want to try some of the exercises, please do. And you're always open to send any of your attempts for me to look at if you so wish, all right? We end now with Dua for Kafara and Surah Al-As. A'udhu Billahi Minna Shaitan Al-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walla asra inna insana lafi khusr. Illa ladhina amanu wa amina salihat. Tawasal al-Haqq wa tawasal al-Sabr. Subhanallah. Shukur Allah, ilahe illallah, as-salamu alaykum.